As a small business owner, my brand is a constant jumble of, I wish more people would order from my shop. Why doesn't anyone like my products? I'm not good enough to be selling to customers. Ugh, why do materials cost so much? I should just quit. Mixed with a little bit of, this is great, everything's great, I'm so happy with where I'm at. OMG, I just made a sale, I feel so lucky, I'm proud of the work I do. I can't believe I'm a small business owner, how cool. This roller coaster of emotions and moods is what we signed up for when we started a small business and chose to turn a passion into profit. It. it can be incredible and satisfying and hopeful one day, then feel extremely stressful, draining, and hopeless the next day. I think the best we can do is A, not give up because most of the time the negative self-talk is fully just made up in our own heads and we're actually doing A-OK. -okay. B, give ourselves space to take mental health check days like what I decided to do in this vlog in order to avoid burnout and also just to be kind to ourselves. And C, know that you're not alone in feeling all of this. There are thousands if not millions of us small business owners who feel the same seesaw of emotions, even if no one in your immediate circle can relate to you. I think the mundane, anxiety-inducing, boring, chaotic, tiring parts of running a small business suck, obviously, but surviving through these tough moments also kind of makes me feel like a superhero, as silly as that sounds. So here are a few days in my life as a small business owner, experiencing all of the mental health struggles, wins, hopes, and thoughts. I hope you enjoy. Good morning, guys. Welcome to a little day in my life, taking care of my mental health as a small business owner. I've had a lot of things going for me in a very positive way recently. I just feel like the universe is on my side. I have a lot of opportunities. I'm enjoying the work I do so much. It's pop-up shop season. I'm making orders both online and in person, but inevitably with all these things going on, I end up feeling pretty overwhelmed. I get stressed with trying to meet deadlines, stress in general about just like the future of my business. It's such a privilege to own a small business, but at the same time, I feel like it can be a little bit draining just because I'm very go 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 with my business and I often don't leave enough time for self-care to just take a break and relax. Small business work doesn't feel like work work and so I end up just like spending 12 hour work days doing small business related things and then a few weeks later I realize how burnt out I am. I feel like I give a lot of really good like inspirational motivational type content for you all but I think it's also really important to mention the times when you aren't feeling motivated and the times when you do truly need to rest in order to to be better the next day. That's the point I'm at right now. So we're going to take it easy today. We're still obviously going to be doing small business things because we are business owners and we have to. I need to pack an order. I need to run to the post office, clean up my crafting space, film a video, do admin things, responding back to emails, prep a little bit of inventory with sewing. I might do some candle making, but not sure about that. But then in between those things, also finding at least five minutes an hour to rest and to just like chill and stare at a wall, think about nothing, go for a walk. And hopefully this inspires you to implement a little bit of balance into your life. I know I need to practice what I preach because I don't always do that, but today's, today's the start of it. I had somewhat of a stressful morning, but it's all okay. I did take my one hour walk this morning, which was great. I listened to a podcast. I think I listened to Boss Babe and also Girl Gang Craft, both of which are very inspiring to me. So I didn't feel like it was work listening to them. I felt very like inspired and motivated. But at the same time, I don't have to listen super closely to what they're saying. So I was able to just enjoy my walk and have a good morning. But right now I do need to fulfill an order. So I think we should start with that. Very simple Etsy order, not too stressful. Now the scary part about talking about mental health as a small business owner is knowing that I'm fully bringing all the negative mental health things upon myself. Like I didn't have to start a small business. I can quit at any time. I can start a different business. I can just go back to keep keeping this as a hobby. I can just get a part-time job working for someone else if I need extra cash and so on and so forth. Basically, who am I to complain about mental health struggles as a small business owner when I can just solve all of my problems by not running a small business? But would that really solve anything? I think the urgency and love and almost painful care that we have for our business and our position as the owner of this business it just shows how net positive the whole experience is. 100% of the time, I would take running my small business over quitting my small business any day, regardless of the struggles. The reward of packing orders, meeting customers, creating something out of nothing is such a magical feeling. The potential of my business is boundless, and that's the most exciting thing I think I've ever realized in my entire life. However, the joys and privilege and nuance of being a small business owner absolutely do not discredit your mental health. It took me a long time to realize that we get to feel overwhelmed. We get to feel stressed and anxious. We get to feel bad about ourselves without anyone telling us that we don't have the credentials to feel that way or that we're just being ungrateful. It's okay to have negative mental health days the key is figuring out how to wake up the next day feeling better and ready to get back to creating.
first therapy session done. Let's have a little chat, shall we? I absolutely love running a small business and being a corporate girly, doing content creation and doing all the things, but at times it can get overwhelming. As we all know, I love being a productive do-it-all girly. And that often means I don't really always think about things like, how am I really feeling? Am I okay with how the situation is unfolding? And whether or not I might need a break. Because as a stubborn small business owner, who the heck has the time when there are orders to fulfill and products to launch and an empire to build? But a lot of the time, burnout really just seems to sneak up on me. I get stressed, I start neglecting my favorite things, aka the things that actually make me feel good. And it's been a constant struggle of trying to balance working hard to achieve my dreams and enjoying the journey at the same time. As you guys know, a lot of the day-to-day -day small business owners things aren't too strenuous but over time the little bits of doubt and frustration and worry just like all build up internally and then catapult me into periods of just not feeling too great about myself. I know that this is a feeling a lot of small business owners can relate on and you guys know as a solopreneur it's really not that great to be stuck in a bad mood for too long and it's even worse for me as a person, as a friend, as a family member, a wife, etc. to be living in a state that's less than my ideal self. Recently a lot of negative self-talk has been holding me back. As a lot of you probably could tell with a two month long break from not posting on my business Instagram account, which I recently made a fix to, but it's still a struggle. Anyway, I knew that I needed to try something new to get me back to feeling like my happy and healthy self. So I decided to try out a session of therapy, specifically BetterHelp. A huge thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video and more importantly, for helping me take better care of my mental health as a small business owner. I just had my very first session today and my therapist was great. She listened to all my small business owner issues. She's not a small business owner, but she really just like understood the different types of stress and anxiety and frustrations that I was feeling and gave me some really great tips on how I can combat these feelings and just like get back into my zone. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and to give you helpful unbiased advice and they'll meet with you at your convenience. This means doing a therapy session over the phone via messaging or a classic video chat whatever you feel most comfortable with which is actually the thing that drew me to better help i didn't know if an in-person scheduled therapy visit would like fit into my very busy small business owner calendar and i just love that better help really understands our chaotic small business lives and the therapists are able to chat whenever is convenient for us another great perk is that you will be matched with the therapist within 48 hours of signing up which is so great because i tend to not see my anxious burnout phases coming so when i signed up i was matched with the therapist so quickly and I was able to get into the nitty-gritty therapy work that I felt that I needed. And if you don't think that your initial therapist is right for you, you can switch therapists at any time. Trust me, it took me years to get to this point and to help myself because I am a DIY girly, a crafty girly, a I like to do my own projects and handle my own stuff girly. But when I say that better help has helped me exponentially more than I could have DIY helped myself, I'm not kidding. So as a small business owner, as a crafty girly, as a human in general, if you want to try out BetterHelp, you can use the link in my description or you can choose Monica Razak during sign up and you'll enjoy a special discount on your first month of BetterHelp. Thank you again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Now let's talk about how to dig ourselves out of a hole that we most likely dug ourselves into, even when it feels like we don't have the time or energy for it. One of our biggest issues is that we are constantly busy with packing orders, creating new products, doing content creation, preparing for events, boring admin things, and all the other 24 seven small business owner tasks that we need to account for. So who is the time to talk about feelings or to take a break or to get eight hours of sleep when there are a million and one things that take priority? But once you realize this truth, your business will not only start to thrive, it will excel further and better than it ever has in the past. And that truth is this. Taking care of yourself is a direct investment into your business. As an entrepreneur, you are the magic key to the success of your business. All-nighters, neglecting hygiene, avoiding fresh air for days, and eating quick, convenient packaged food may initially seem like the best sacrifice for your business, but especially as a small business owner where you wear multiple hats, if not all of the hats that are required for the business to function, your wellness and happiness are directly correlated to the health and profitability of your small biz. Taking care of yourself doesn't even need to be the biggest deal either. Something as simple as taking a break to work on a fun project you've been putting off because you feel like you didn't have enough time or buying yourself a fun new outfit to wear just because you wanted something new and felt that you deserve it or even shaving 20 minutes off of your nighttime work block to take a 
a quick walk, grab some froyo, check out the sunset, and hey, because we're taking baby steps, you can also multitask and bring some orders with you on your walk so you can drop them off on your way to go grab ice cream. It's the five minutes of grace every single hour where you step away from your small business and do what you want to rest. That can be staring at a wall, responding back to a text from a friend, journaling, taking a lap around the block, whatever it may be, it's worth it. And you won't realize how much you depended on these quiet moments of rest until you deprive yourself of them and ultimately end up feeling burnt out. So on this day, I did exactly that. After a day of working on my small business, doing tasks that don't necessarily seem draining, but over time, the exhaustion definitely hits a breaking point. I took the last few hours of the day off, went for a long walk with my husband, grabbed some Amanda bananas, which may be one of my favorite parts of the city I live in, admired the view, went home to watch Netflix, and sometimes that's the most productive thing you can do in order to wake up feeling energized and eager to get back to work. Good morning. It's actually the next day. I just really wasn't feeling it yesterday. I feel like a lot of us small business owners, do it all girlies, just like ignore the parts of ourselves where we kind of like break down and have days when we just like physically emotionally mentally like can't do anything we kind of just ignore those days and then wait until the productive days come back wait until we're feeling better to start posting again or to like share anything with our communities but i just think it's not worth ignoring anymore yesterday i just was not in the mood due to like various different things going on to continue to work on my small business to even really do much i've been planning a lot of really exciting things but a lot of that has like caused me to become stressed and nervous about the future. Today is 4th of July and yesterday after having my first session with BetterHelp, the therapist that I had, she recommended me to schedule in rest even when I don't feel like I need rest because I think I often just like don't give myself breaks until I feel like I need a break, which seems like that makes sense, but then you're really trusting yourself to know when you feel like you need a break versus like grinding through something I feel like there could be times when I just like don't even notice that I need to take a break and I need rest and I need to literally just stare at a wall for like five minutes or I need to go out and get some fresh air. Otherwise, I end up just like piling a whole bunch of like angst and nervousness and frustration on top of each other and just like not thinking about it too much until I just feel burnt out. That's what I'm trying to actively avoid because the most productive thing to do is to actually take care of yourself and to take the time to take care of yourself. So that's what we're doing today. It is 4th of July and we're taking a whole rest day where nothing is planned except to go to the thrift store, which is not a work thing. I might like record a few things to show you the cool finds that I find, but I'm bringing Josh with me. He's never been to this thrift store before. So that'll be a fun little thing for us to do together. And then also obviously there will be fireworks tonight most likely. So we will go and probably go out by the pier and like watch the fireworks. But otherwise we're gonna do whatever restful things I need to be doing. I actually find cleaning very therapeutic. <laughs> not so much my crafting room because my crafting room kind of stresses me out when it gets really really messy but maybe i'll clean like my bedroom or like a different part of my home i think people get really like proud of you and, and people just like really put you on a pedestal when you own a small business like people in your lives are probably so proud of you for starting a small business for having a bunch of hobbies for going above and beyond and like doing multiple things in your life life and that could be really encouraging but that could also be really dangerous in that now you're almost like you feel like you're expected to continue to be a go-getter and productive and like have a successful business i have felt myself feeling that a lot lately i'm so grateful that i get so much positive reinforcement from youtube comments instagram comments like etc and the people in my actual like irl life which is like so amazing you can't ask for anything better but then i will go and like flip that into oh this is a good thing that i'm grinding because they're giving me praise this is a good thing that i am not giving myself breaks because people are noticing all the hard work i'm putting in like it's a good thing i didn't get any sleep last night because now i have a whole bunch of inventory for my pop-up and people are so like happy that i have a lot of really good inventory so if you need a break and you've never been praised or appreciated for giving yourself a break consider this me being proud of you for giving yourself a break and for knowing your limits and for investing in yourself which in turn helps you invest more into your small business and to your hobbies and your extracurriculars i'm now going to sit here for the next maybe 15 10 15 minutes doing absolutely nothing not scrolling on my phone trying not to think too much about the different projects that i want to get done sit here with my matcha
I made a smaller matcha today. It's very cute. And just chill, you know? Had a very nice breakfast this morning. We made protein pancakes. We had strawberries and blueberries, bacon, syrup, butter, like all the good stuff. Little happy 4th of July breakfast. <laughs> Treat this as your sign to take a freaking break. You deserve it and it'll be worth it. Before I started my small business, my form of relaxation and rest was crafting, sewing, and creating things. But now I do all of these things for my small business work. My worst fear is that I stop loving my relaxing hobbies just because I now do these things for work. So I started prioritizing crafting for my mental health just as much as I prioritize crafting for my business. Now I get it. If you want to grind with your head down until you make it big time and never see your loved ones and forget what daylight looks like and go full on beast mode with building your business, I 100% get that. I even respect that to a certain extent. But I think a lot of us started our businesses to return some sort of balance back into our lives. We strive for a daily mixture of work, play, relaxation, grind, fun, discipline, and freedom. And with that comes remembering to prioritize our happiness. Wait, but look at how nice this pouch ended up. This is the fabric that I was cutting yesterday and I received in the mail from Spoonflower. I actually talked with the designer on like via email. She emailed me just saying like, thank you for purchasing her design on Spoonflower. And I emailed back asking if it would be okay if I use like her design on this fabric to like create and sell products. And she said, yeah, like, go ahead of course that was very kind of her and she also like offered to make some free adjustments to the pattern if i didn't like something if i wanted to change like one of the colors slightly or the spacing of the fruit or anything about it but i love it i think it's perfect like i might i don't know i might take her up on like customizing it because then it would be like super custom to me but look how nice this looks and it wasn't even that hard to make and i did use the batting that's like the really thick batting that i swore i'd never use again like look how thick that's so thick but i used it and it wasn't that hard and it's like it just stays like that like it doesn't like it doesn't want to constrict like it wants to be poofed up like that i love that um i accidentally did use blue chalk um if you can kind of see so i'm trying to get that off i kind of wet this corner to like try to get it off but it, it's not coming off so from now on i'm going to use my water soluble ink pen or white chalk one or the other but this one will just be for me. It's so cute. I also use like a cream zipper. I think I like it. I was originally trying to do a red zipper, but I didn't have one. Then I have like the cotton canvas in here. Or it's not really cotton canvas. It's muslin. It's really neat. Oh, I gotta take this little thread off. Like I love how well I did the sides. You can't really tell, but like before they would just like not be neat at all. The top stitching's really good. I love it so cute. Now, although that project was initially supposed to be a little fun craft for me and just me, it got me thinking that I could definitely add it to my product catalog on my shop, which in turn started stressing me out, knowing all the things I would need to get done in order to launch that product soon. On a bad day, I probably would have stayed on my computer for hours until the end of the day, planning an entire launch, psyching myself out about the success of the launch, and reconsidering if the product was even good enough, if I'm good enough. But thankfully, I was recording this video and knew that it was definitely time for a little break. One thing I like to do when taking breaks is kind of trick myself into feeling like it was a productive break. Because honestly, taking breaks is actually productive because once you've had the time to relax, you can come back more energized and excited to create and work. So I did one of my many other hobbies, which is caring for my plants. Repotting plants is a super mindless thing to do and something I've been wanting to do for weeks now. So it ended up being a nice meditative and satisfying break. Then I had the absolute privilege of watching the Macy's 4th of July fireworks in real life on the Hudson River and it's experiences like these that make me feel so grateful that I forced myself to take a step back and enjoy the present moment. We as small business owners always feel like we're missing out if we don't sign up for an obscene amount of craft fairs, or we don't launch products multiple times a month, or if we don't keep up with the latest trends on small business TikTok, but we never stop to think about what we would be missing out on if we didn't take moments for ourselves or take the last few hours of a day to wander around town or wake up without an alarm clock and do some morning yoga just because we wanted to potentially even need to we would be missing out on the freedom that owning a small business is supposed to give us the balance that makes work and play so much more enjoyable we would be missing out on reaching our fullest potential all because we thought taking care of our mental health wasn't worth it
fireworks last night were so cool. That's the first time I've seen the Macy's 4th of July fireworks like on the Hudson River. It was literally right in front of us. We picked the best spot. It was so crowded, but so happy I did that. Yesterday was great because I didn't film too much, but we went thrifting, we went grocery shopping. I cleaned up my crafting room a little bit. We had like an amazing dinner where we made chicken wings for the first time and just like an all American type meal. Josh had a burger, we had like a side salad, we had like celery and ranch, just like everything. We made buffalo wings and garlic pepper, garlic, garlic parm chicken wings. So it's just a really great day overall. I feel like I was productive, but in ways that were like relaxing. I didn't really get any work done. I didn't edit. I didn't do obviously any of my corporate job because we had a day off. And now it's basically a long weekend. I'm really excited to just like continue to chill throughout the weekend. But the last thing I wanted to say on like mental health related to small business owners is that everyone is different, obviously. You really have to just gauge how you're feeling even though other people are saying that they can go five days without taking a single break. Maybe you can't go five hours without taking a break or like five minutes certain days. So it's really important to of course take in inspirational content and get ideas from other people and hear about other people's experiences but it's even more important to just like be in tune with yourself and know what you need. Your business will thrive a lot more when you're able to take care of yourself. I know it seems selfish to take care of yourself first, but think about it in a way where if you're thriving, then your business will thrive. If you are not thriving, it's going to be exponentially harder to get your business to do well, especially at in-person events and pop-ups. Like people can tell when you're stressed out or when you're frustrated or when you're just like not in the mood. So when you're just like overall doing better and you're the best version of yourself, all of the other good things will follow. I made some oats this morning. It's pretty much gone. My didn't show it to you guys before I started eating, obviously. And I also made a hot matcha, which is almost done, just because I wanted to feel a little comfy and cozy today. So I made a warm matcha. Now to end off this little mental health, taking care of yourself <laughs> type video, I'm going to make myself something. A lot of us makers, creatives, like small business owners who make like handcrafted goods, we make a lot of stuff, but it's usually like for others or for our business. And we often just like neglect crafting and doing art for ourselves. So I'm gonna make a cute little bathing suit. I'm going to the beach tomorrow. It's like gonna be my first beach day this entire year. And potentially even like a little top that I've been wanting to make myself. It's like a Ghani dupe. If you've like seen these everywhere, they've been very trendy and popular for a while now, but I held off on making it cause I wasn't sure if it was something that like I personally wanted or if it was just trendy and I was like keeping up with the trends, but I've wanted it for like a while now. So I'm finally going to make it for myself. I have a few options for fabrics. I don't know what I'm gonna go with yet. Almost 50% of businesses fail within the first five years of being open. And it's my goal for us to not be in that failed 50% group. Some say it's a lack of motivation, lack of capital, maybe the business owner changed priorities or lost interest. But I think a big factor of feeling like quitting is better than continuing is the desire to rest. I'm preaching to the choir here when I say that being a small business owner is hard work. Not everyone does it and not everyone can do it for that reason. You're defying odds by existing as a small business owner right now and you didn't get to this point without your struggles, mistakes, haters, and self-doubt. It's inherently difficult to be where we are today, so why do we make it even harder on ourselves? Whoever came up with the concept that pushing through the pain and ignoring your body's scream for rest and grinding and grinding and grinding until we reach a certain goal, then once you reach that goal, grind even more. Whoever came up with all that doesn't know the feeling of cuddling with a body pillow at 3 p.m. in the afternoon on a Sunday watching a comfort movie. They're missing out on the joys of sewing for fun and making their own bathing suit just because it seems like a cute, fun little project. We'll never experience the pleasure of feeling energized all day long because you're able to fuel your body with whole meals, exercise, physical rest, and mental rest. And worst of all, they won't understand us when we say how fulfilling our small business lives are from the second we wake up to the second we fall asleep. I know there's space in this world for us to exist as hardworking, productive, ambitious entrepreneurs who also prioritize our overall wellness and happiness. And I think it's okay to have down days, unproductive days, self-conscious days, days when we slip and find ourselves considering quitting. That's valid and appreciated and necessary. Because after those days comes days when we remember that we're pretty cool, our small business is pretty cool, and how cool is it that we get to have the best of both worlds? It's tough not getting enough sales. It's hard learning about marketing and sales when we're inherently creative people who seem to be blindly figuring our way around owning an e-commerce business. 
It's draining putting our blood, sweat, and tears into our passion and not seeing the results that we always dreamed of, but with a little hard work, optimism, patience, mixed with some work-life balance, rest, and wellness prioritization, I know you'll get through whatever negative struggles you're currently facing with your small business, and I will too. And I can't wait for us all to achieve our dreams and enjoy the journey along the way. So to end off this little mental health self-care small business vlog, I started and finished a complete sewing project that was fully just for fun and it felt so freaking good to do that for myself and even made me feel more motivated to continue creating hand sewn projects for my small business. I took a cute little mental health walk to the bookstore to browse and grab an ubi latte and celebrate just taking care of my well-being. The bathing suit came out so, so, so good. I can't be bothered to put it back on. I did try it on for um, the little reel that I'm going to be posting about this or the TikTok. I put it on, took a little video, completely forgot that we were talking here on this video, but you kind of get the gist. I'll insert some pictures here or maybe tomorrow if I get some clips when I wear it to the beach. I will insert it here. But basically the last step is to fix this little piece right here. It's, there's an opening. My serger just didn't catch all the fabric. And then also at the back, in order to flip this whole thing inside out, I needed to like make a little hole back here. So I need to hand stitch those closed. Looks cute, low back. It's also reversible. I thankfully had this green that matches like pretty much perfectly the inside of this. So it can double as just like a basic green bathing suit. And I love that, but I think tomorrow I'm gonna wear this. Now, the other thing I was going to make today, it doesn't like match that aesthetic. So I might just like wear something that I already have for like the clothing portion of tomorrow's outfit. It's already 4 p.m. I'm feeling like so much more like myself now. I don't know if you can tell, but I just feel more excited about crafting, about doing things, about working, about relaxing, about like life in general. I did get an ube latte from uh hey coffee people which is one of my favorite coffee shops here in hoboken so that might have to do with my elevated mood right now but also i think just like when i go through my little bits of stress and low self-esteem not great mental health it's just so good to know that like it doesn't last forever for me it can last anywhere from like a few minutes to like a couple weeks I've had times, especially like in college and high school, especially when I was like super stressed, it would last longer than that. And I would just be in a bad mood and frustrated and like really upset with myself and like everything around me for just extended periods of time. And it just wasn't enjoyable. So I've kind of learned my coping mechanisms, and like recognizing when I'm burnt out and when I need a break and when I'm not feeling too great about everything. Giving myself a little break, knowing that it'll pass. It will pass. Literally, it could take a day, it could take a couple weeks, but like eventually it will be over. And so for the past few days, I've just been going easy on myself and I hope you enjoyed the process. Got a nice little bathing suit out of it. It's so cute. Oh, by the way, this fabric is from Blue Moon Fabrics. I got it online. They do have a store in California. I've been to it once, but I got this online. It's pretty affordable from what I remember. And then I also need to use this elastic, which I got from Wawalk. Anyway, thank you for watching. I want to edit this video and I want to get it out to you guys. See you on Instagram, TikTok, anywhere else. See you in the next video. And I love you guys. Bye.